So is 2023 going to be the year you finally get started with real estate investing? I hope it is. We're bringing back the one and only Beth Traverso, and she's created five things that you need to do to get ready to make 2023 your year. How you doing, Beth? Yeah, I'm doing great, Mike. Thanks so much for having me back on here. Always a pleasure. I appreciate it. Thank you for getting prepared to do this. I can't wait to hear your list of five yeah, things. Probably going to sound a little familiar, I'm guessing. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I'm just guessing, you know, but, you know, uh, here with, you know, the one rental at a time community, what we all want to do is help people get into the real estate investing or, you know, start or continue their journey toward financial freedom through real estate investing. And um, I know right now is a time that people are thinking about what they want to achieve in the next year. And so I thought it might be good to just kind of do a little recap of a few things. People are thinking, well, what can I do right now? If I want to start real estate investing in 2023, like what would that look like? And so I think, that, I think it's a great idea. I look forward yeah. to the list. Mm -hmm. So one of, the first thing I said that I'm thinking is to define your goals and strategy. So you have to know what your goal is before you can achieve it. Otherwise, you're just kind of shooting in the dark. So think about what that means for you, whether it's a, a freedom number, which is like your number that you would need to get from passive income in order to uh, be able to live financially independently. Um, and, or whatever that might be, you know, that might be one person's goal might be, I need $15,000 of positive cash flow a month in order to be able to quit my W2 for somebody else. It might be, um, I don't know, setting up a legacy or it could be any number of things. So think about what your goal is and define that. Cause then you can reverse engineer about where you need to be. And I would say, think about your long-term goal and also your short-term goal. So you can think of very short-term goals, like this is what I want to do this week. Here's what I want to do in the next month. Here's what I want to do over the next year and write it down. And we did a video, a couple of videos back too, about the goals and how to make it the right type of goal that's most likely to be successful. So, and then also think about your strategy. You know, we talk a lot about, I'm a big fan of the house hacking. It might not work for everybody, but I think it can work for a lot of people if they're really motivated and really want this to happen. So that might be your strategy, or it might be investing in small multiplexes, or it might be single family homes, or well, just think about what your strategy is going to be and what you want. It might be short-term rentals. There's many different ways you can go. Um, so I would think about what strategy is going to be the best fit for you, because there is no one right strategy. Everybody has their own set of circumstances and what they want to achieve with their life. So yeah, it's funny. I wrote a, my second book's called 15 Conversation with Real Estate Millionaires, and it was that idea that really spawned that book, right? Because again, every I have 15 different stories from somebody starting with a 203k loan, uh, you know, somebody, you know, to somebody burning the boat and going all in, right? There's all kinds of different stories. Know your why, know what position you're in, know what makes sense, and and get going. So I, I love that. Yeah, I know that sacrifices are going to be required. You know, I haven't known anybody that's done it without sacrifice. So you got to be ready for that. Agreed. And your, your, your why and your motivation has to be strong enough to make yeah, it there, worth it. There will be bad days. You got to have a strong yeah. why. And life is hard either way. Like there's hard things if you do it. There's hard things if you don't do it. So it's kind of like picking your hard. So think about that as well, I would say. And then second one, I say study your market, your buy box. You know, you talk about that a lot and it is so important. You got to learn your market because you you can't know what's going to make sense and fit be a fit for you without studying your market. And if it's if it's your local market where you live, you know, for a lot of people, it's easiest to start where they live. It doesn't always work, you know, like for you and for other people, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, for most people, they're going to look where they where they are or within a short drive of where they are and just get out there every day. You know, I remember when I was starting, you know, I would just go out and just look at houses for sale all day, every day. If I couldn't get inside, I'd drive around, look at the outside, get to know the neighborhood. So, you know, each street inside and out, go to open houses, talk to agents, talk to other people doing it, get to know, talk to people in the neighborhood. You know, if you're, if you're thinking about a neighborhood and you're not sure if it's a good place to invest, I just get out of the car and talk to a neighbor who's out working in their yard, go for a walk. You know, people will tell you, people want to fill you in yeah. on things. So it takes a long time to get to know what do you, you say like at least 60 days or so, like every day going in there, you know, I say minimum that and it never ends, you know, I'm doing it every day still, but you know, just get out there and learn it because there's going to be intricacies in a market. Like you could have a three bedroom, two bath house and one block worth, let's just say 400,000. And then one other one, three blocks away, it could be worth 700,000. Like, well, why, you know, you need to know why. 
So, and the only way you know that is by getting out there, doing the work and you can do it online. And, but I think there's some like boots on the ground that needs to be done too. So I I agree. The beauty of a buy box um, is it's permission to focus, but what most people miss Beth, it's, it's permission to ignore everything else. If you're decided on a three bedroom, two bath, don't look at duplexes. Don't look at quads. Don't look at condos. If yours is a three bedroom, two bath house, that's all you look at. I think a lot of people say they have a buy box and then I ask them what they're looking at. It, it's sure some of the buy box, but it's everything else. I'm like, guys, you, you're, you're missing the subtleties of yeah. what a buy box is. It's so easy to get distracted and then get sidetracked too. Or like somebody came to me with this deal that they say is a good deal and it's nothing at all. Like what the, it's not aligned with their goals. It's not aligned with their buy box. It's not, they, they doesn't work for their financing. It doesn't, there's all sorts of reasons you know, yeah. and yeah, so don't get distracted by the great deal is, you know, you got to learn, is it, you know, is, what is it a great deal and is it a great deal for you? Mm-hmm. So, and that just takes time and, and work with somebody, but it's, it's, we're talking about things you can start doing today and today something, you know, you can start defining what that is today. So, Agreed. and it may shift a little bit over time. You, you might study something for a while and realize, you know what, this isn't working. I need to maybe look at something different. So, um, so the third thing I would say is to get your financing in order and your finances in order. So and that some people might say that's number one, you know, because you got to know how you're going to finance this if it's going to work. So, mm-hmm. and it's some, for some people, it's a process. And for some people, you may not be able to do it right now, but start to do your research to learn what it's going to take. Like if your credit score needs some work. So if you, if you team up with a great mortgage lender, they will help coach you on credit repair and other things. The ones that I work with will work with a buyer hand in hand to help get them in a plan to where they're able to purchase, whether it's now or later, but it will, they will help you determine how much you need for a down payment, what loan programs you may qualify for, what you might need to do as far as getting reserves and things like that. And you don't know some, a lot of people think they know what they need to be financeable. And it's oftentimes not what they think they might think, well, I got to pay off this credit card. And like, well, maybe that probably is a good goal, but you may not have to do that to buy a house. And that money might be better off spent paying off some, I don't know, an old collection or something, or who knows, or or having a reserve reserves. So don't assume that, you know, talk to somebody who's really good and who's going to take you under their wing and coach you, you know, and if you reach out to, you know, if you start to, if you get your team together and you get good people, you will, you will find a really good lender. Who's going to want to work with you. And especially right now, they've got time. Most of them, like they want people <laughs> to work with, you know, and I don't Very mean that true. they, before they were so busy, they just couldn't even really do much of anything to really, you know, drill down with people, but now they've got more capacity to do that. So, well you know, build your team, you know, and once you get some people, you know, a couple of lenders that you really um, resonate with that are really able to help you, you know, then it, it becomes a, a reciprocal relationship and you can give them referrals and they, they, you help, you, they help you, you help them as part of the relationship building. So find out what that is that you need to do. And if it's not something, if you're not able to get financing right now, figure out what your best plan is going to be going forward. And again, I go back to the house hack things. That's how you can get in with the best terms and lease down and you can get best things rates. like FHA financing. And, you know, if you qualify for it, VA financing and you'll get much better terms. So I, I keep going back to that. Well, I agree. I mean, you I don't did know it any better way to get lady. started. Yeah. yeah. Single lady working in, in, in service industry. Right. So, yeah. Very, yeah. I was a banquet true. waiter and I bought my first house, house hack. You know, I put, I put a tenant in the basement, you know, put a little yep. kitchen down there, called it good. You there know, you go. I, like I didn't want to share number- my space. I didn't have to share my space. You can make it work for you. So mm-hmm. cool. uh, number four, I would say meet other investors yes. who are doing what you want to do. So your network, yes. you know, it's so important. People will always say that um, you got to know other people that are doing what you want to do. It might not be exactly the same way. You don't have to do it exactly their way. You might get some people who's like, this is the way you got to do it. It's like, well, take all that into consideration. Like I said, there's no one fit for everybody, but get to know other people who are doing what you want to do. I found that overall, most people in real estate, whether it's sales or investing, you know, the people who are doing really well, they want to share. They want to get the word out to other people. It's a very giving um, group of folks with an abundance mindset and just tap into that, you know? Um, 
And some of it's just a matter of just being around. If you're just around enough and you contribute enough, you will get to know people. It's a process. You can't just jump right in and be like, be my mentor and tell, tell me everything you know. You got to work on building the relationship. So, totally and there's good. ways these days, there's ways you can do it online, like through the one rental at a time community or other Facebook groups. I've met a lot of my people in my network um, virtually. So, but there are also people local you can meet. There's, you know, if you're in a bigger area, especially there's real estate meetups where you can meet with other investors and just go there and just learn and absorb, ask questions. Don't worry about dumb questions. Just ask your questions, just be there to learn and give and you get what you give. And so if you're there receptive and positive and learning and ready to do the work and other people will key in on that and they'll want to help you. It's just human yeah. nature. I agree. I agree. Well, I mean, these have been a great four so far. What are you going to bring us home with number five? <laughs> I would say keep your, get your mindset right. Yes. So, and that's, that might even be number one, really, because you can't do any of these other things if your mindset is not where it needs to be. So I know for a lot of people, myself included, they feel like that's for real estate. That's for other people. That's for, that's a rich person's game. That's for other people who are different than me. You know, I don't have X, Y, Z. There's all these reasons why I can't do it. Think about that a little bit and maybe do some work on your mindset and how to clear away that um, those self-limiting beliefs that are are holding you back. Because, I mean, all you got to do is look at the people in this community who, um, you know, like, like Dion, you know, like he came from debt to, you know, self-made multimillionaire and he did it later in life. And, it, you know, so you can look at that for an example or. Lumberjack landlord who ninth grade dropout myself. I was a banquet waiter. I did not come into, I did not start from a place of financial privilege or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and it takes time, but it does have, it, it is possible. And so I think part of it's just like trying to shit, take some time being really mindful of trying to watch yourself talk and question those beliefs that you think you have that are limiting you. And ask how can I do it rather than why I can't. Yeah. The one thing I would keep consistently coaching people on today, especially with social media is, is something I learned 30 years ago in sales. You can have 10 people say good things about you and then only one bad thing. And the one thing spreads faster. It's just how negativity works. Mm -hmm. How does that translate to today? Folks, if you watch 10 positive videos, and then you step in and watch one crash video, it's over. Yeah, You have to block those channels. You have to get them out of your feed. The crash bros are the only people making money on those videos. And some of them are making six figures preaching nonsense and fear. I really believe they're, they're, they've, their time is over. Uh, people are going to realize that they don't need more fear in their life. Let's turn those channels off block them, cancel them, whatever the right word is. We don't need any more fear. Recessions are scary all by themselves. We need to understand where there is great fear, there's great opportunity. Recessions are where wealth is made. You do not need more to be afraid. So block those channels. Yeah. And there's always something to be scared about. And there's always something to be grateful for and excited about too. So uh, I blocked those out a while ago. Even some of the big, big ones that I used to be big fans of, I just, they got too negative. I'm like, you know what? I just don't need this garbage in my life. I got enough things to think. I got about. enough real world going <laughs> I on. Need, I don't need somebody else's imaginary problems put on me, you know? So no, you know, just, it is, it's empowering, you know, cause now I don't see that. If you want to go looking for it, cause you feel like happy, you know, making a good day, a bad day, go ahead, you know, but you know, it's not. <laughs> You really don't need to do that. Yeah. And it feels better, you know, um, because like you've said so many times and all your guests, it's like, there's always opportunity in every circumstance, you know, up market, down market, this market, that market. Yeah. We, I've lived through some actual real estate crashes and you know what? It worked out great. And in retrospect, people think, oh, that was the best time. I wish I'd bought more, you know? But, you know, I don't think that we even have YouTube back then and I maybe mean, not in any meaningful not, way. I don't Not think, in a meaningful you know, way, yeah. 10 plus mm -hmm. years, 10, 12 years ago, you know, but um, back then, can you imagine what it would have been back then, you know? Yeah. So, Ooh. but I remember there were some local websites. There was this one like seattlebubble.com, which had really good data, but it was all about um, doom and gloom and why not to buy. And man, if those people had bought. Ooh. 
yeah think about too. how yeah how how many millions of dollars they would have benefited from that so yeah so just keep it all in perspective folks and yeah work on your mindset this is a great opportunity to right now is a great time to get started in making your goals for 2023 and beyond so get out there and get at it there you go beth thank you so much where can somebody follow you yeah, they can find me at, uh, they can reach out to me through my website, bethtraversogroup.com. And I am on Facebook and Instagram and pretty much everywhere else. So easy to awesome. find. Thank yeah. you so much. Have a wonderful week. Thank you.